Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we are going to continue our conversation or our look at decks for spring. And this time we're going to be looking at the oracle decks that I like to use in the springtime. Now, like the tarot that I already did, this is not really an exhaustive list of all of my oracle decks that I would consider my spring decks. This is more of a collection of my favorite type of decks for spring. And um, some of the ones that I tend to use a lot during this time of the year. So I thought it would be fun to just jump in and take a look at them. Um, they are in no particular order, so we're just going to have a little bit of fun with it. So we're going to start things off with the Wild Offering Oracle. Um, this is a deck that, look at the backs. I really enjoy um, the artwork on this deck. It has a definite spring feel to me because it's all the blossoms and blooms. I love Katie Daisy's artwork. Um, some of the language on this deck, I will be perfectly honest, kind of misses the mark a little bit for me just because it doesn't resonate with my, um, my personal practice. Um, but I do intend to kind of modify it to change it to that, to something that fits me a little bit better. Um, and it's just really the use of the single masculine, um, God and that just or Lord that just really doesn't resonate with um, my particular practice so um, at some point I do plan to to change them to just make the language fit a little bit better but to be perfectly honest that doesn't keep me from using this deck um, I love the artwork on it I love all the the flowers and the floral and it does feel very spring it feels very new and fresh um, and the messages are actually really great but they are definitely um, more of an affirmative type of message. And so I tend to use this deck um, with my, my personal well, wellness practice, my well-being practice. And so I like to pull one of these um, every week just for a message. It actually goes into my planner and I um, let that kind of provide my message for the day. And I really enjoy working with it in that way. And it's for me, it's really all about the artwork that's on these cards. It's just fantastic. Um, but like I said, the messages are really great too. It's just sometimes I stumble over the language a little bit, so I kind of have to just sort of adjust it in my mind. Um, but that totally works. So that's one I definitely enjoy working with in the spring, although I do use it year round. And like I said, I particularly use it um, for affirmations for the week. So that is the Wild Offering Oracle. So another deck that I really like to kind of tap into in the spring, and I think it's because it has a lot of the great spring colors. Maybe it's because I have it in kind of this floral bag, but this is the Goddess Oracle. And um, it has like beautiful artwork. Now I have trimmed my copy. And for me, I kind of like to explore and play and, and kind of um, experiment or really play with goddess energy during the spring. As the year kind of progresses, I found that I have a tendency to kind of settle into a particular um, kind of goddess or divine feminine energy. Um, last year, which I just saw her go by, um, I, I really settled into um, Sedna. I don't know where she went. I saw her um, because she was up for a really long time on my on my altar. Um, but anyway, I tend to kind of, again, like most things in my practice, it kind of ebbs and flows seasonally. And as the year goes on, I kind of do a little bit less um, play and exploring and, and working with the different energies. And I kind of settle into one for the year. And that just kind of seems to be um, how my practice goes. Uh, but for the spring, this deck I really like for just kind of pulling... Um, in those different goddess energies. It's a wonderful um, deck to work with year round and it has a great guidebook that gives you um, not only a little bit about the goddess, but it also has like some little prayers and things of that nature. So I really enjoy that. Um, it also does work as a straight up oracle because it has the keywords at the bottom. So you can totally use it as an oracle as well. Um, but I tend to use it more as a um, kind of, I don't want to say play because that makes it sound like it's not um, you know, important or serious or anything, but it's kind of just exploring the different energies of the goddesses. So I really enjoy working with it that way. And that really ties into the spring for me, because like I said, that's kind of when I get, get going, kind of figure out who, um, who or what energy I'm going to end up kind of really tapping into for that year. So that is the goddess oracle. So another deck that I find myself using year round is the magical herb oracle. And this one I actually got, 
I want to say late last year. So I guess I haven't even had it for a full year to say I would use it year round. Um, but I really love this deck, so I'm sure I'm going to use it year round. Um, what I, I think part of it is the, the, um, I think part of what makes this feel like a spring deck to me is the um, herbs and the sort of botanical nature of it. It does have a little bit more of the kind of um, pastel-y light colors, but I think what it is is from a design aspect is this darkness coming into the light. And then we see these kind of bursts of light behind all of the um, blooms. And to me, that just really kind of signifies spring. And I think that's really what, what ties me into this deck is kind of a spring energy deck. Um, I love the keywords. It does have the uh, title of the herb on the bottom, which is always nice. But really, it has these great keywords. And it also has little icons that kind of key you into that um, keyword. So here we have focus and we have the little binoculars. Um, here we have progress and there's a ladder. So I think that's really cool because it kind of ties in that, that symbology um, with the plant energy as well. So here we have calm with the um, stacked stones for chamomile and I just think that's really wonderful. And so I think it's a lot of that dark to light with this burst that kind of just like that energy, that rebirthing, bringing forward. I feel like in these videos I use the word rebirth a lot, but that's really what spring um, embodies for me. And, um, so I think it just, it works. That's, I think that's what really ties that in that idea for me, but, um, and it has lovely backs, which I think are really great. And it's just one that I really enjoy working with. Like I said, I haven't had it for a whole year, but it's definitely one that I can see myself pulling from all year round. So that is the magical herb Oracle. So another little deck that I tend to pull from a lot in the springtime is um, the Sacred Travelers Oracle. Now I have completely modified mine. So I've turned it into a square deck. I've cut off all the titles and all of the keywords on it. And I've turned it into a square deck for more intuitive readings. Um, this deck really has a kind of fairy tale vibe uh, for me. I love the soft colors. I love the imagery. Um, it just, it reads like a, like a story, like a fairy tale, which is really wonderful. Um, and for me, a lot of the messages from this deck really read in terms of, um, diving into your own story, like discovering your own story. And to me, that just kind of resonates with that spring energy and, um, really kind of discovering something new. So it's about, you know, the transformation, but it's also about really, um, really going out on your own and, and finding your own story, which I really love about it. And for me, that just really has a spring feel. It tends to be a little deck that I um, pull from a lot for more intuitive work during the springtime. And it has like, again, it's that lovely um, Hay House matte cardstock, but again, I have trimmed mine down to be a square deck and I have edged it. Um, in this lovely pinky purple to match the box. So that is the Sacred Traveler's Oracle. So another little deck that I feel has a lot of spring energy is the Oracle of Oddities. And I mentioned this in the Companion Tarot. So this is the, the Companion Oracle to the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Um, and this, I think, again, like I mentioned with the tarot, it has a spring feel to me because it has the, the blossoms um, coming out of those the grayscale imagery so it's like light um coming from the darkness you know the earth blooming from its sleepy winter and so it feels very much like an early spring deck to me again this is one that i do read with year round i absolutely love this deck i get wonderful messages from it, it has a great energy to it um, I do use it a lot with the Antique Anatomy, but I find that it actually reads really well with the Carnival at the End of the World. It's like one of my favorite decks to pair it with. Um, so I think this is the first indie deck that I've shown. Um, I only have three here, three indie decks that I'll be showing you, but it has the beautiful backs. It was out of print for a while, but it's back in print and being sold through a couple of different retailers. So I'll try to um, be sure to link that in the description box but it's just a lovely deck i love the energy of it and again it has that early spring that like um you know the earth blossoming from the dark slumber which is really beautiful so that is the oracle of oddities so while we're talking about indie decks this is my sacred creators oracle and i think that this one for me um the spring pull is really the color palette it has all those wonderful pastels 
Um, this is a deck that I actually really enjoy working with. I actually got it to work more um, for business type readings, but I actually find that it works really well um, for the more sort of spiritual cosmic connection type of readings for me. Um, and it it pairs beautifully with the Moon Child. That's like one of my favorite decks to to read with this deck with. Um, the messages are really um, lovely. They're to the point. They're very creative. Um, I like the little icons. And again, the the um, color palette in the deck is amazing. And it does have really great simple um, messages. This one is one of my favorite cards. The Sacred Flow of Yes. It's just really beautiful. You are living poetry. Um, this would very much, I think, work also um, as an affirmation type of deck if you wanted to work with it that way. And it also kind of gives you some things that like, they're kind of actionable. Like here, befriend the word polarize. Um, bravely market your magic. Like there are kind of actionable things that you can find um, in this deck, which I really appreciate. Here's find your sacred flow. So if you were doing like a tarot reading and you wanted to kind of like wrap up of like, well, okay, that's great, but what do I do now? Um, this would be a great one to turn to, to kind of take you to that next step. Like, what do I need to do next? And it's beautifully produced. Of course, we all know it's, you know, by Chris Ann, has the gorgeous backs, um, has the lovely matte gilding, which is, which is nice and has a great card stock. So it's just a lovely deck and I like pulling it in. But again, it has that spring energy, I think for me, mostly because the color palettes and um, because it has those kind of like, um, kind of transformative kind of growth messages that I think um, really, really key me into that spring energy. So that is the Sacred Creators Oracle. So another deck that I really love for spring is the... Um, Nature's Whispers. I've actually put this one back in order because I was doing something with it. But um, again, it has like those gorgeous pastel colors. I'm not going to get it out of order because I have something that I'm doing with this deck. Um, and I love the artwork. Like this is a wonderful deck for path working. And that's one of the things that I really like to do with this deck. And in fact, the reason that it's in order is because I'm path working my way through the deck. So I'm doing them in order and kind of path working my way through the cards and as like a story. Um, and the, it's just really, it's all about the images for this. This transports you to another world. I honestly don't pay any attention to the keywords. And the only reason I have not cut this, these borders off is because I'm working my way through the cards. So I need the numbers on them right now. But um, I think probably when I'm done with that process, I'm probably just going to, to cut the bottoms off and just make them beautiful art cards. Because like I said, the way I work with this deck is not as an oracle, but as a path working deck. Um, however, I think you could definitely use it as an oracle. The little book that comes with it is actually really nice and it has some great information in it, some great messages. Um, and I think the, the keywords at the bottom are totally fine. It's just for me, this deck is all about these images. It's all about this artwork, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And I, I love working with it in that path working type of way. And so that's the reason it's still in order and, or I put it back in order and um, that I haven't taken the titles off yet. So that is the Nature's Whisper Oracle. So another deck that I tend to be drawn to use more in the spring is the Empathetic Oracle. And for this one, it again is not so much about the artwork, although I do think that it has some kind of spring-like images. It's more about the way this deck reads for me, that it feels kind of um, spring-like. It's very much full of, um, it very much has some um, lovely kind of transformative messages to it. And I think that's really what keys me into the kind of that spring energy. Um, to be perfectly honest, though, I do actually use this one in the summer as well because it also has a great energy for that. And occasionally I am trying to work my way through all the seasons with my decks um, in terms of showing them to you. And so we may have a couple that we see um, get repeated because there are some decks to, that to me have kind of um, more than one seasonal energy to them and this is probably going to be one of them that'll show up as in the summer as well but 
It also has a very transformative energy, which to me is very indicative of the spring. And I just, I love the artwork in this and it has great, um, great messages. The little guidebook is really wonderful too. And the um, artwork is just beautiful. And it is a, believe it or not, it is a red feather shipper. Um, red feather shipper, yes. And it has lovely matte cardstock and it has shiny gold gilding, but even though it's this shiny gold gilding, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's still here, right? I haven't taken the borders off. I haven't taken the gilding off. Although as you can see, my edges are really chewed up, but um, it shuffles beautifully. And I think that's one of the reasons why I just haven't touched it yet because, or haven't modded it yet because I haven't had any tactile issues with it yet. So I haven't really felt called to mod it yet, but that may come at some point. So anyway, that is the Empathetic Oracle. So another Oracle deck that I like to use a lot in the spring is the Hedwitch Botanical Oracle. And this is just a beautiful Oracle deck that provides that fresh kind of energy. It has a lot of white space. Um, so I showed the, the other, the companion or kind of companion deck, the Line Strider Tarot in my um, spring tarot deck video. And this one I, I read a lot with that. But I also use this deck a lot with some of my sort of busier tarot decks because it really kind of tones things down. So it kind of just creates some breathing space. And that's really wonderful um, when you have kind of a, a deck that's a little bit more chaotic. This this creates that nice, that nice breathing space. Um, just a little distance, a little calm to the, that's what it brings. It brings calm to the reading. And it definitely, because it's a bot botanical deck, that definitely kind of pulls me more into that spring vibe. Although I do have some botanical decks that feel more um, in, t in tune with other seasons. Um, so we'll see my other botanical decks along the way. But this one has very much a, a kind of a blossoming feel. And again, I think it's that artwork. It's, you know, the grayscale with the pops of color. Um, which is like, you know, like I said, with the um, work of oddities, it's like the earth awakening from the winter slumber. And that's what really brings that spring vibe in for me. But this is a deck that reads well with just about any tarot I throw at it. And it creates that nice, um, that nice breathing space. This has a beautiful box. And um, it does have the thinner Llewellyn cardstock, which is really flexible, which I know some people don't like, but I absolutely love because it shuffles like a dream. Oh, and I do want to say that the guidebook for this deck is absolutely wonderful. Um, it's, I do have to go to the guidebook most of the time if I want more information, though. So it's one of those that um, I can tune in just to those keywords, but most of the time I like to go to the guidebook to get that extended message that's in there and to learn more about the um, plant that's on the card because it's not something that I'm super familiar with. So that is the Hedgewitch Botanical Oracle. So another little oracle that has very much a spring vibe to me is one that I keep showing up um, in lots of videos on both of my channels is the She Believed She Could So She Did deck. And this one, um, this one's just all about the botanicals that gives it that sp spring vibe. Um, but the, the messages are really great too. And I use this um, as part of my, my wellness practice. And I um, use these to set intention for my wellness practice for the day. So I pull a different card every day and I, um, you know, write note the, the key part of the card that pops out to me. Um, and I do have more information about that on my other channel, but this is one that it surprised me. I wasn't expecting it to be like a deck that I would actually use. I actually purchased it to use like physically in journals to like put it in journals. And then when I kind of got it and I started looking through it a little bit, I kind of felt a little called to, to use it and... Um, it occurred to me to use it for my wellness practice for setting an intention specifically for that. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of where it went from there. And now it's, um, I've been using it for, uh, almost two months now, strictly as a, as an affirmation for every day for my, or an intention for my, uh, wellness practice every day. And I'm really enjoying it. It's a wonderful deck that quite honestly surprised me. So that is the, she believed she could, so she did insight cards. So the last two decks that I want to show you are actually very new to my collection and I have not worked with them yet. However, they both have very much a spring vibe to me. So I wanted to go ahead and include them in this, um, in this video. The first one is 
uh, Rebecca Campbell's uh, Work Your Light Oracle with artwork by Danielle Noel. Um, I do have all of Rebecca Campbell's books. I enjoy her writing. I enjoy her messages. Um, so I was, I was interested to work with this one and, um, it was a gift along with, um, all the other, uh, mass market Danielle Noel, uh, decks, which was really lovely. And you'll see this one is still in order because I haven't worked with it yet. I've just kind of looked through it, but I think it's really the, again, the color palette, um, much like the moon child. It's all about this, these pastel colors that really bring in that spring energy to me. Um, but it's also that sort of cosmic -y connection that I think really, uh, I, I kind of become more aware of or more in touch with during the um, springtime. Um, I have seen some videos of this deck and I have um, seen some of the, inf the uh, keywords. Um, some of them I really, really like and some of them I'm not sure how it's really going to work. So it'll be interesting to play with it. But it again, it's that color palette just has a really spring vibe to me. Um, I would say that Rebecca Campbell's work overall has a very spring bright, spring vibe to me, like her um, books and stuff feel very spring, transformative, rebirth, and that kind of thing. So I'm really, really curious to um, to start working with these. Like I said, I have this one, the um, Starseed, and the like Yogi or something like that. I don't, I can't even tell you. Anyway, um, so I'm really excited to start working with them, but they do definitely have that sort of spring energy to me. I mean, look at these backs. So and again, it's that Hay House, lovely matte card stack, which is absolutely wonderful. And so that's one that I'm really looking forward to getting to know. That is the Work Your Light Oracle cards. And the last Oracle deck that I wanna share with you is the Maiden Oracle. And this is the um, companion or by at least by the same creator of the um, Ophidia Rosa Tarot. And I just like, I felt that I needed the Ophidia Rosa. I think I talked about that in the last video. I'm sure I'll be talking about it more. And I wanted to get the Pythia Botanica, which is the Oracle deck that I believe came between those two. And it was out of print at the moment. Um, it has since come back into print and I went ahead and pre-ordered it because at this point I'm invested in the Slila and Olive decks. And this one, um, again, has that very early spring feel to me. It's like a gorgeously produced deck. So this deck is really, um, I, I find it quite fascinating. I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, but I, I'm kind of fascinated by it. I'm sure it has, I think it has some sort of a structure to it. I have not read the little guidebook that came with it yet, so I can't tell you for sure. But um, I can tell you that the first 20, um, you know, 21 cards are the full major arcana, which I think is kind of interesting because maybe I might be able to use this, like keep them separate and use them for like maybe major only readings, which might be kind of nice. Um or maybe setting out some sort of intention or something like that. But um, they're really pretty. But I think this, again, like the Aphidia Rosa, I think it's an oracle that actually is going to require some work. I don't think this is a um, just read out of the box type of a deck. Although I do, like I said, I haven't used this one yet. So I could not tell you for um, sure exactly what what this deck is going to be good for. But I feel like this is an oracle deck that's going to take some time to get to know. Um, we have some uh, little kind of mixture of things. We have some symbols and some plants and some goddesses and things like that. Um, some of the keywords are really interesting, like lust for dust. I don't even know what that means. Um, here's a fiery ring. Um, forever morning. It's a little bit poetic, which I kind of like, and I'm thinking there might be something there that I can tap into. So here is plucked plotting. Interesting. Um, and then we go into, we have some goddesses. So like here's Athena and Medusa. I think I saw Aphrodite. And then we moved into some more of these like kind of oracle type messages. So nothing is everything. Others wishes go around. Unforgettable. I mean, it's just kind of fascinating. I love this one. This one I think is my favorite card in the whole deck. It's little mushrooms. It says in threes. Um... 
anyway, it's a, just a, it's a fascinating deck. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm totally fascinated by it. So I think it's one that's going to require me to do some work with it. Um, again, like the Fidia Rosa, it's gorgeously produced. It has a beautiful back. Um, the backs are, of course, not reversible, but it is an Oracle deck. So um, I don't read reversals either way, so it doesn't matter for me. But it's got that beautiful matte gilding, that lovely um, matte cardstock, which is just lovely. So that is the Maiden Oracle. So that's a look at some of my favorite Oracle decks for spring, along with a couple new ones that I have that I feel like are probably going to have very much a spring vibe for me. Um, I would love to see what your spring Oracle decks are, so feel free to do a VR or let me know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. You will find links for the decks featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.